Hello, 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 guys. How's it going? How's it going? We are on yet another beautiful, beautiful Good Games with Funk Case, also known as GG with Funk Case. Myself, Funk Case, I am back. Episode three. We're there already. We got there already. It's been, it's gone so quickly. The previous, uh, previous guests have been lovely. We've added yet another one, of course. We only do lovely, lovely guests. <laughs> but uh, my next, uh, my next instalment for this week is a, a man I've been a fan of for a while. A little while now. He also, fun fact, before I put him on screen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer. People think he looks like the American version of me, like, like my American twin. So, you can judge this for yourself. Maybe, maybe not, who knows, but this, is, this has been like a, a funny thing that my boy Cookie pointed out many years ago, and from then it kind of spiraled out of control, and now everyone pretty, thinks, pretty much thinks that he's my American twin. So, I'm gonna bring him in the screen. The man known as Lee Jennings, aka Neonix. Hello. Hello. American <laughs> Funk Case here. I'm I'm here to uh, to continue the creed of Funk Case, but America. Yes, I don't know if you can see like the the dis the, the closeness to me and him right now. I don't know if you see see it. There are pictures where we do really look the same, and even my girlfriend is like, "Wow, this is very strange." But this is the man, the man who is my some say that everyone has like, everyone has like a twin somewhere in the world, and weirdly enough, mine is here. In is it Dallas? You're from? Yes, sir. <laughs> Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Yep, straight from Dallas, Texas. Any uh, any fans out there from Texas be like, yeah, oh, hell yeah, my brother. <laughs> oh, I should have cracked out a cowboy hat, but I don't. Uh, do you have one? Not right now. Uh, not right now. I had a really nice one growing up but um i think that's just like every texas kid yeah every texas kid has a pair of boots and a and a big belt buckle and a hat is it like um, is it I, like something you just have to do i think it's just part of being texan really <laughs> it's, i don't think it's a half i think it's just like for some reason texas parents really want you to take a lot of pictures growing yeah. up and like different get-ups yeah like everybody has their little kid get-ups that they take pictures in and it's always like cowboy. It's always one of them. You gotta have cowboy I thought, get up. I literally thought that was. I thought people from Texas would almost try and get away from the idea of it, if that makes sense. I don't uh, know. Sometimes, like, if you're like mid city, like I'm, I'm the least. I mean, I'm wearing a tank top and a night face <laughs> hat, and my hair is bleached blonde. I'm yeah. the most Californian Texan in the state, probably. Yeah, but possibly. Yeah. Most yeah. people usually most people like if you're outside of the city will look like that actually. right if you okay so here's here's what i'm i don't know if anyone else has got this on their mind you have the hat do you have the boots i do not have a pair of boots that oh, fit right oh the fit okay yeah. so you have a pair but they just don't fit they do not fit right and i gave them to my brother so he has my nice boots. Right <laughs> okay <now. laughs> i thought i, I thought i was your brother boots. come on i thought it was just me though i don't own any well, so you don't i don't think you can get any over there <laughs> no can you, can you buy cowboy boots i've not i can't lie i've not seen a pair honestly but you never know there could be some there could be some like american import stores i don't know there's candy stores there's american candy import stores i found out from my local supermarket that they do twinkies and like small uh, uh what's the things you put in the toast in the toaster uh oh, pop tarts yeah pop tarts yes they have small pop tarts they have, we have pop tarts but small ones they're like the the import ones I was like, we have an American section. I can't believe it. But it's like, dude, the Pop Tarts were like, like six bucks for one box. Yeah, they're, they're expensive. I mean, even for like regular Pop Tarts out here, like the ones that will jack up your blood sugar and give you a heart attack, they're <laughs> like six or seven bucks for like a small, really like, tiny Pop Tarts. Really? Like four or five of them. America. That's what I'm saying. America. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, here, so. The man is here, and uh, what's the game of choice today? What have we chosen? We are going to be running some Apex Oh, legend. Lord. We did this last week. I did this last week with Sweet Tooth, and uh, I'm not the greatest Apex player. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay at FPSs in general, but for some reason, I haven't really been able to, like, nail my aim, if that makes sense, like, on, on Apex. I found my aim on most FPSs, I can't lie. Like, Call, like Call of Duty, I've, I've nailed it. I'm not that great at Warzone. Or maybe it's a maybe it's a BR thing. I don't know, but 
like uh, Warzone, I've, I've pretty much nailed. My CSGO aim's been pretty good. My Valorant aim's been really good. Sometimes I'll, I'll go headshots galore, but for some reason, Apex, I just can't nail it down. Are you playing mouse and keyboard or? or, or? I am actually going to be the super nerd. Oh, and no. I'm Blasphemy! But, Blasphemy! But, hear me out. I what? grew up playing Halo and Call of Duty on console, so that's kind of just how I'm, I'm whipped I'm not, into it. Okay, I'm not trying to hear any excuses, because I grew up literally fanboying to PlayStation. I'm using mouse and keyboard. I have my uh, my HyperX stuff. Shouts to HyperX. And uh, I'm, try I'm trying, man. I'm trying to be mouse and keyboard. I'm trying to be a better person in FPSs. <laughs> I'm, okay, there are games that I will learn on. But then there are games that I know that I'm already decent at. Like, oh, I say that and I'm probably going to get my butt wiped on on Apex now. Me, but, me like, sure. I'm, I'm decent with a controller and it feels natural. And every time I try to play with a keyboard, I get like really... It's not even the aiming. It's just being able to like multitask with one hand. Yeah. Because I'm used to distributing the load over like two hands. Yeah. I'm just used to it. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I, I, I didn't actually struggle with the idea of mouse and keyboard when I first played it. There was nothing wrong with that. It was just the whole, instead of using your thumb to look somewhere, it's the whole like having to use a wrist to flick and hit someone. And it's like the sensitivity to learn what your sensitivity is. It's a very strange situation when you're so used to console. To go like this yeah. and it do a 180 and it's like, okay, that feels okay. But then when you're trying to do those little... Those little tiny, when someone's in at a long distance and you have to hit them very, very gently. Like, it, all it takes is like one slight big movement and you're going all over the place and it's like, I can't hit him. So you lower your sensitivity to match that. And you're like, cool, I can hit them from distance now. But when I get, when someone gets close, I'm doing this. Like my whole arm yeah. is like, I'm rotating my whole arm and I can't keep up with them because I'm too, so it's like that. You have to find a way. I, I mean, most people will know this anyway, but from, from my experience, it's been a struggle. Um, but I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah. My biggest struggle here, I, we can queue up too. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. We can get some trios games going and then we can do some arenas and get really angry later. That sounds but, great. Honestly, it sounds great. Um, I, uh, yeah, arenas. I feel you with the mouse and key struggling though. Oh, you want to run arenas now? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, okay. Going, we're going straight in. I've I played it last week. I've got Apex pack, I don't know why. Um, we're going to run it because I played it last week and how I know how to play it. It's kind of like, so kind of like, 3v3? Yeah, three, it's three kinda, on it takes, it takes kind of like a, it takes like a Valorant or like a CS kind of approach to it mm. where it's, it's a 3v3 elimination. You can still revive, but yeah, it's basically once you wipe, that's the end of the round. And I think it, it runs on, I can't really remember how, exactly how the bracket works, but it, it runs on like a lead of three, I think. So yeah. like, if you can win three consecutively, then you win. And I think it goes to like, like 11 rounds or something like that. Yeah. I can't lie. I don't think we won when I, when I played this <laughs> with Sweet Tooth. So I can't promise that this will be any good. But, uh, okay, Bloodhound. Okay. Is that your go-to guy or is that just who you like to use for this game mode? I'm going to feel it out. So there's a couple different strats that I try to play. Yeah. Um, and generally with some of these maps they're a lot more close quarters so i'll generally try to get a couple of rounds in as bloodhound just to feel them out because you can right. come from a distance yeah and then i'll maybe switch over to fuse because fuse has the uh the little knuckle clusters thing on his queue yeah have you got so is who is your go-to like because a fuse is a new one right who was your go-to before fuse uh pathfinder oh uh, okay yeah, yeah. You ready? He's a he's a he's a uh, he's a loved man that one. They added the vault as a uh... go flatline I think. That is interesting. Uh, I'll buy two. And we'll play them out. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, because I uh, I've, for some reason oh. I've always clicked with Mirage. I'm not sure why. This is a new one. How is it? I've never I've never played this. I haven't been on this since like, the <laughs> first season. No pressure then. What's that in the middle? Is that a drop? Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. There's so drops in the now. middle, there's, there's care packages gonna be. that drop every round. Um, oh, okay. Okay, there's, there's one right here. Oh. One right here, too. Around, they're gonna loop around one right there. side in this room. I didn't hit him very many times. They hit me a lot, though. Ow. <laughs> 
Wait, what's going on? Why am I not healing? Hello? Oh, there's someone on me? Oh, it's because I wasn't healing my shield, that's why. Oh, Christ. Oh, Christ. I have no idea what I'm firing at because there's a guy to the right of me and there's a guy right here as well. I was in smack bang in the middle of two people. There's one literally around the corner here. Right here, right here. This golden line guy is nowhere to be seen. Okay, there's a there's someone there and someone right there around the corner. Around the corner. Yes, there we go. There we go. There we go. Golden lion. Yeah, this guy right here. Yep. There is another bloodhound running in care package. Are you done? Mono in mono. Yeah. No, I got. Uh, oh. I got clapped. I went over towards. There were two of them that were pushing the care package. Oh, Mr. Lion, I believed. Why did I believe? Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. This this is a I forgot about this whole area because I haven't been able to play the like first season map in yeah. however long. Yeah. It feels weird. Right, I don't think I've done uh too well at round, but we'll get we'll get there boys, we'll get there. Spitfire, that's my boy. That's my boy. Spitfire's my go to. Spitfire's my for sure my go to. Um we'll make it work. I'm gonna buy more. Try to, um, if you can, a good strat for this area is elevation. Yeah, of course, so, like, yeah. These big, Roofs. these big open buildings over there um, yeah. are alright. I'm looking at also, maybe this, this set of stairs here or something. Yep. They are gonna be on me. Do you know what? I'm gonna run around these at this area and stay a bit more mobile in this area. That's not good. Are they over there? Yeah, they're they're on us. Contact with hostile. I don't know near me. They're trying, to, they're trying to ping me. Reloading. Oh. Reloading. I'm just coming around. I think oh, I'm going to flank him. I'm kind of far from the fight. Let's go. Uh, our teammates getting flanked. I'll find him. I'll find him. Fine. They're behind that. He's one HP on me. He said he's 1 HP and I hit the guy twice and he's still alive. Let's go, boys. Got him. Let's go! 1 HP. I hit him like three times before they went down. <laughs> At least he's vocal. Sometimes you'll get on these and you I won't know. have anybody vocal. Yeah, okay. true, true, true. Um, Let's go RE45. Back to Spitfire. I do like my Spitfire. Can't lie. Okay, one thing I didn't do is buy like health and shields in the last one. So I'm gonna do that for this one. Yeah, there's so there's always gonna be one or two canisters on these maps too. Um that you can go and try to grab shields off of. Yeah. Um so that and then the little blue uh little markers, those give you money. So if you hit those, the little blue markers on the map, it'll give you more money to buy better stuff. But they're usually pretty contested. Okay. They're gonna rush care package again. Keep an eye here. Yeah. Staying on the roof here. Eh? Oh yeah. Oh, they're, they're all over by our teammate. I'm really got a lot of distance here. Yeah, they're. I think they're all gonna. They're all tumbling on our teammate. Have we got two on you? 55, yep. Someone directly underneath me, in here, in here. Keep an eye on the care package in case they go to it. There really, to be honest, I got. I, I think I downed that guy who was on the care package, but that was about it. You guys did all the work there. We are making some poopies. We are doing some goodies. We're doing some goodies. I want to ask. So there's one thing. I think I've been wondering this kind of myself, as me, rather than you know, as an interview technique for this for this show, is actually like, 
What is Neonix now in comparison to, say, when I first heard you? Because the first time I heard you was when I, I was really introduced to your name via Faizo. Uh, and oh. he sent me some bits like Dream... Is it Dream Eater or something? I think it was, or Dream Weaver or something like that. Dream Eater, I think. Dream Eater. Dream Eater, yeah, yeah which, I, which I really liked. Uh, and uh, yeah, he sent me a bunch of tracks. He was like, this guy's really good. Check him out. He's my friend. Uh, and I was like, cool. And I checked it and I was like, oh, this guy's cool. Uh, but it, the sound now in comparison to that, to what he sent me then is just like, it's not, it's not even the same artist, you know, let alone, you know, anything else like that. So what is it now? What's changed and why has it changed? I think for me, a big, big thing is 100% creative freedom yeah uh, because back then i was very much locked into a uh they're on top of us by the way they're um i can hear them i think they're outside here. i'm uh they're outside hey. uh it's very much more of a like a creative freedom now where like back then i was very much locked into like a dubstep state of mind where i really just wanted to make just dubstep and I wanted to make like very specific, aggressive styles of that stuff. Ooh, look at you! Petra. Bruh! How much damage uh, did I do? Dude, I swear to God I hit him for like 9 million health. It was it was the second one. That was the Valkyrie. Dude, I hit that man for so much- How much damage did I just do? I swear to God I hit that man for so much damage. Does it not tell you? One? Uh, you peppered one for- you cracked his shields, it was like one shot off, but the Valkyrie came out of the left. So you started shooting a second person too. Dude. Yeah, you got- That was over. messed up, dude. I hit that- I hit that second guy in that room for so much uh, health. That's crazy. Keep getting distracted by gameplay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, carry on. Um, so, I guess like really the- the biggest thing for me is just that I've- I've started to listen to so much more music. Yeah. And be inspired from like so many more different places than just dubstep. Yeah. And that's kind of gotten me to where I am today for the most part. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got it, buff. Oh, I got tapped pretty badly there. Just gonna stay back. I'm gonna rush up. I'm trying to get um some shields in. I think there's someone on me here. Uh, they're all, they're all up, up. Oh cripes! Up, up here as well. They're, they're, they've got the height for sure. I'm trying to move here. I don't think. Oh, they've just scanned. Just been scanned. I'm trying to change my area here because I was being followed. They're still up. They're gonna push down though. We knocked their blood. Out. I cannot see. I literally cannot see. Oh my gosh, there's one right here. <laughs> Yeah, you're in the, you're in the circle though, so you're good. Target's right in front of me. I'll keep an eye because I feel like they're gonna come around where I am. They're gonna try to get there. Yeah, they're gonna try and push for sure. Yeah, you're right. they're they're shooting lifeline. Someone? Yeah, if you, I was just killing their lifeline. So their lifeline, um, that is like an instant. We gotta go get that person if they're down. Yeah. Because lifeline can drop a drop a pod to rev them. I'll bait him. See if we can get him out. Yeah, but the lifelines are like the cheapest thing in this game because they they can drop they can drop a drone. And, yeah, this is uh, bad. We'll, we'll die here. Yep. Give me shield. I'm trying to edge forward to make sure I get maximum. Freaking Valkyries, dude. Let's go. Dude. Nice. It's good job. That was a really good job from that guy. Whew, that was close. So you were saying, you were saying, listening to different music, but like, absolutely. what is it, what music is, is making you do this different style of dubstep? Because it, it sounds like you're not actually listening to dubstep specifically. No way we can blow it now. So yeah, that gives you this inspiration, to, so what is it? I listen to a lot of, uh, garage. <laughs> oh yeah, garage, yeah. No. Garage. A lot of garage, some gorge. <laughs> um, 
But I, I like doing all kinds of stuff. Like, I like listening to that, but I also like listening to, like, 80s music. Yeah. And a lot of classical music. Yeah. I, I, it's just all things that I enjoy that I started to realize, like, what if I... What if I take some motifs from these and... Yeah. I can definitely see, like, an 80s vibe for sure in your, in your styles. I don't really hear anything else, maybe, as such, but... Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's weird. Up. You're very... Oh, I've been scanned. I'm gonna move around, I think, here. They're all up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's... I oh, know. There's something good there. I've just, I've just fucked up. No one's there. They're chasing me down. Oh, what a what a gamer move! I love it when people can. Oh, I should have changed weapons instead of reload. There's two in this road here. Uh, they're not in there. I think they're, yeah, they're outside. I think you should win this really with the behind shots. I did 1,200 damage. Jeebus. Let's go, dude. We're insane. I can't wait Good to job. see what this is going to look like. You got about 1,200 damage there. No kills. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes, though. As long it goes as you with, can... Every single time I play this, that's how it goes, honestly. As long as you can lay down the cake, then then you've done your job. Yeah, true. It's like how it goes when, when we'll play... Like if we do like private matches, is um, dude look at look at like, my kills and, and assists compared to his, yeah. and the amount of damage I did in comparison. Yeah, this is See, my I mean, life in I, this game. I got the most kills and I did the least amount of damage, but that's just how it goes. Like you'll have people that'll lay down the sauce, and then, and then you get the finishes. That come through to clean everything up. You're the poacher, the poacher of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Mental. All right, well, should, should we go again? Let's do it. I think we should do it. Honestly. Let's see if we can keep it going. What do you think was the turning point for your sound change? Because if you talk about, if I was to, if I was to describe your old sound compared to now, I would say it was more typical. You had a very typical sound. It was your own version of that typical sound, but it was a very typical sound. And now is like neon. You can tell Neonix from everything. Like Neonix is his own sound. It's like a very weird but very cool edge on weird if that makes the most sense yeah. at all i think honestly, it's weird like, in an interesting I mean, way not weird as in like you listen to it and you're like what am i no, listening no, no, to no, it's no, nothing no, to do with that I, it's I, weird I, but in a really cool way it's it's definitely i think a big mindset change too as much as earlier it was um it was very much a you know, me listening actively to other things and trying to like incorporate those into my music. Yeah. It's also very much like a mindset. And I, I actually, when I was doing lessons uh, for the the majority of the the quarantine period, um, I I mainly started thinking about my music right, more as kind stretch. of like a, Let's go. I was orchestrating a band as mm. opposed to like just working in a, in a DAW and yeah. just kind of putting stuff together. Yeah. And that was what I taught to a lot of the students that I had in those lessons was mainly thinking about things like, you know, how, how, how would it play in a band? And I think that's partially like why a lot of my stuff sounds so distinctly weird in a cool way is that I'll think about certain elements of that music where I'll have a synth playing as if it's like a rhythm guitar and then B synth as if it's playing like a lead guitar. Yeah, I can hear that for sure. I think one one thing doing a sort of regular quarter note and then one sort of doing some weird weird ish over it, you know, it's like that's that definitely I can see that. For sure. There's two over there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I see him. Oh, I can't really get a tap in here. I've got, I've got yeah. Uh, I didn't even bother shooting because it's quite far distance wise, but pretty tagged, but they're underneath. I think they're pushing me. I'm just gonna run, give them the run around here, I think. One here, one here. Yep, I'm pushing up. Careful, because they might rush. Here, package. One on 
me. Oh yeah, they're they're at the other care package. One's really tagged if we push through. I'm going through. I don't know why they went. Ooh, there's a revenant. Oh, there's another one back here. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. Ah, oh, dude, my if my if my if my mirage had gone out without the wall being in the way, I feel like I would have won that because he would have shot that mirage while I was gonna finish him off. That's annoying. Yeah, <sighs> they, this map is. Hard. I mean, we just played a whole game where it was all up top and now it's all down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I do all be these like kids that. Want to play down. Yeah. Is there um is there any is there any collabs you've always wanted to do? Is there any collabs you want to redo? I don't know if there's anything. You know, any any artist in particular that you would love to do class with, in and out of dubstep. Let's just talk about in in a whole music sense. If you if someone was to go, you know, one of the guys you would love to collab with, they said, let's do a collab. Um, whether it be them in dubstep or you just work on something else, is there anything? Who who would it be? Honestly, who would it be? Okay, I'll split it into two categories because I feel like there's two different kinds of answers for this. Um, for dubstep collabs. Um, obviously you and I are still overdue. Oh, this is true. This is true. I'm getting shot. There's one up top, and there's one down. Sending out my decoy. Um... Ouch! Gotta patch myself up. I wanna get this guy on the roof. Oh, they're gonna push me in there. Oh, yeah, I haven't been pushed here. Oh, no! I was about to pop it on him. Um, well, now that I'm getting <laughs> getting absolutely annihilated, um, dubstep people would probably be you. Um, I would like to eventually maybe see a collab with Sudden Death just because he's a really good friend and we have yet to work on music together. Mm. Um, and then I think that Faizo and I are definitely overdue since we've been friends for like seven years or more now. Um, so those are my top three dubstep people. My top three collabs like outside of dubstep would probably be number one, Taiki New Light, because I want to make uh, some cool house music. Interesting. Ex dubstep artist, by the way. Yeah, I know. Um, I used to play shows with him. He's a, he's a Twi Twitter debacle. <laughs> but, uh... Ooh, look at you. No, let me under the thing! <laughs> Rush corner, then turn right. Yeah. But Taiki New Light, um, Scream. Look at him. What a fool. Look at him. There's gonna be another one. They're hitting me. Um, Scream, who I've been, uh, who I've been Damn trying it. to work with, but. We'll see if that happens. I'm sure it will. I mean, Scream right now, if, and for anyone who doesn't know this, Scream is obviously a dubstep pioneer of, of the of the absolute highest uh, honor. Honor. He's one of the kings, you know? He's one of the uh, original founders and has so much respect in the scene from everyone. He's definitely a, yeah, a top-level pioneer that everyone would probably love to do collabs with, obviously, honestly, in dubstep. But I think you two would work because you're very good at doing legitimate garage. Garage. So I feel like he'd enjoy it. But yeah. Yeah. I I want to. Um we'll see. It's, it's up to him at this point. I've sent him a bunch of stuff now. Yeah. But um that and then I'm I'm trying to think of a third. My my list has been obviously like when you're put on the spot it's a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because you can't think. But I mean I'm honestly I like to think of everybody as kinda like peers in music. So. Yeah. For sure. I would like to say that, you know, I'd love to collab with just about anybody. Oh, you tried, buddy. Oh, he did it. Oh. What a little stinker, dude. I feel like I hear someone where I see nothing. I don't think I'll be seen, though. I heard something. Oh yeah, roof here, roof here, roof here. I tapped him for still at 36. I put a death totem down too. 
Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Up above is destroying me. Yeah, they've definitely got the height advantage on this one. I'm gonna try and wait to see if they drop down to try and come come at me and this other guy because me and this other guy are kind of together at the moment. Come to you. Oh, there's so many, oh, so much smoke though. <laughs> Are we playing Shroud, dude? Because we were doing that whole side-to-side -side stuff and he was not missing any of those shots that's behind you. Oh, uh, uh, lord. Dude, I could not hear that dude at all. That's crazy. I peppered all three of those kids and they all it took was like 30 seconds for them to get that revenant back up and then and then they both came back after me. I couldn't even hear them. It was crazy. It's funny yeah, that you mention Scream, actually, because the one thing about Scream right now is that he obviously was an OG in the dubstep scene, but he moved the house in, I don't know, what, 2012, 2013, something like that. It caused the ruckus and it made dubstep effectively die in the eyes of the media, which caused a lot of panic over the levels of promoters and everything like that. But, um, like, what do you, he's back now, essentially back. Like, if you, if you follow his Twitter, he's just, he's making beat after beat. I did a, I did a set with him recently, um, on a, on a, Hatcher thing. Like Hatcher did a 24. No, sorry. Hatcher did a 54 hour stream. He did a 24 hour set and then um, everyone else after followed. Uh, and Scream was a part of that paying dubstep. I and mean, Scream's done numerous things. He's done like things in arenas um, during Corona, which was like a whole sort of comeback sort of to dubstep thing as well. He's done things here and there. And he's done EDC back to back with Roscoe. Like it's these little things where I'm like, is he back? Is he dabbling? Has he got, has he effectively done what he did with dubstep? to what he's going to do with house like is he bored of house now is he going to dubstep i don't know but like this whole thing makes me feel like it's not the not the comeback of dubstep in any way but it makes me feel like the scene's probably in a better state if if scream is back in a in a way you know because i don't think he's probably listened to any of it do what do you think about the the, the state of the scene right now and we're not talking like let, we're, let's talk on a, on a more grand general scale rather than there's some really cool new guys coming in like the, the general health of the scene what do you think about it right now from your from your eyes. Oh, God, I mean, you're testing my my age in the scene now. Too. <laughs> um, I think personally, right now we're in a we're in a good spot just because it's. No, uh, and I I, had, I talk about this like at least like once a week with yeah. someone. I think everyone um, in dubstep does. I think they, they go, oh, is it? What do you think? Are we? Is it dying yet? Or you know, like I think we all just worry <laughs> subconsciously and talk yeah. about it. It's just, I think, so like, for me anyway, the way that I've seen it grow as somebody who came on at least fairly, maybe not as early as, as you know, some of the, the founders, but mm. someone who has been involved for a while. Um, I think it's in a better place now just because the bar is set so much higher. Because like yeah. there's kids that are that in a are, different you know, in a different sense though. Because when Screen It came along, that set the bar ridiculously high instantaneously. I think now the bar's been set in a sort of um, in a sense of how good the music is. Does that make sense? Because Screen It came in and oh, changed yeah. the game because it was new. But not there's not a lot new now. Like a lot of it's been done and things like that. But the bar's been set because there's so much good music. Quality is just so much like the production quality is just so much higher, and I think that's a given. Just you know, with the state of things and technology growing better and faster uh, exponentially. So like, Dude, just, are you I absolutely kidding me? Starting, when I was 15, starting to make dubstep, you know, for me, a lot of the time it was like. I had people to look up to, but only, you know, people that were only working at that standard of ouch of that year versus, you know, like, oh, thank you, whoever helped me, <laughs> versus, like, kids now, they have, you know, like, all these artists that are absolutely groundbreaking. They've got so much more to reference from than, yeah. than like, we did, where it was like, oh, you know, there's the Skrillex guy. And like he's doing stuff differently. Yeah. 
I think it's a, I think, I think it's a case of like uh, the difference between like back when I started making dubstep, there was like YouTube now. You can YouTube anything. Like Virtual Riot, for instance, you could just follow Virtual Riot and be one of the best producers in the world just from learning from what he's teaching you on that. On that, you know, like I didn't have that starting. I had to just build my own empire kind of thing. I think it's a lot easier exactly. for kids to learn how to make music, and I think there's a lot more choice in dubstep now than there was back in the day. I think I in the earlier days, teaching it, whereas the earlier parts were kind of exploration. Now we're more into uh, a deviation phase where yeah. there are kids that still are learning, but there's also a lot more people that are willing to teach. Yeah, I think a good analogy for it is like we're all we're all space scientists. Like we we were all on one planet, right? And we all wanted to find all the planets. We found all the planets, or we're finding most of the planets at the moment. And now we have to like. We have to explore those planets, you know, like we, we found little areas, little pockets. There's a guy on this roof here. There's little pockets yeah. been found. We, we, we found little pockets of uh, things, you know, to learn from. We have to learn the soil, the new, you know, we have to basically just learn from these planets that we've discovered kind of thing. This is my my on, off the tip uh, kind of analogy of the whole thing, but that's literally what it feels like to me, quite honestly. Like. Oh. Okay. okay. There's one more. Down, I'm not sure. There's one here somewhere? Oh yeah, he's streaming now. Oh my aim is terrible! Nice, we got him. We got him boys. I just feel like I just feel like, you know, like I say, we were discovering the planets, the planets have been discovered, now we're, 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 send, we're sending everyone out to whatever planet these guys want to be on, and then, you know, working out what we can, how we can, you know, turn, we can turn this planet into a, into a habited place, you know, like, it's such a weird analogy, but it kind of makes sense to me, like, we've discovered everything True. now. I am trying to hear you, but your, your connection's breaking up a little bit. Oh yeah, no, it's fine, you, you did freeze, but you're back now, so it should be fine. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, there you are. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, you're back now as well. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, my internet freaks out sometimes. <laughs> it happens. But yeah, it's, the, it's <laughs> I, I feel like that, that analogy kind of works off the tip of my, you know, it's like the discovery's kind of been done now. We're kind of honing the discoveries we've done, in a sense. Yeah. So it's like, you know, what can we do now? What can we do now? And I feel like that's cool because there's loads of weird stuff going on, essentially, at the moment with people's ideas. There's lots of really cool stuff, you know, that future idiom stuff. Came at a really good time, really, because that that whole emergence of, of Marauder really t taking over the scene was uh, such a, a heavy way to to do this genre. That's true. It's it's definitely. It's just, uh, there's a lot of people right now that are changing the sound, and there's so much of that sound that I think it's it's like you know the possibilities are limitless. That's kind of where the growth is at nowadays, which yeah. is great. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, there's a lot of really, really cool, weird stuff going on right now. There's a lot of interesting things. I think, I think one, one for me, the uh, what typifies this scene right now is with where we're at. I think Papa Khan's reign is a very good example of kind of a point we've hit, because like Marshmallow released that track, obviously, and. Uh, but that track isn't your typical, typical, like, it's got, it's got that future rhythm feel to it, and it's got an emotion to it. But the beat yeah. is so janky and off, like, your regular music listener won't understand why they're playing it like that, you know? Because obviously everything is so, for, in pop music, for instance, everything's so formulated and on grid, and everything's perfect, and it's, you know, it's rolling so cleanly that aesthetically it's perfect for the brain, you know? That's why House goes goes down so well, it's 4-4, four, four, perfectly on beat. But Rain is... The drums are on beat, but the but the actual synths themselves are kind of they're flowing all over the place and they're doing all, all sorts of mad staggered. stuff. Exactly, and that yeah. for me that is kind of like that's like everything we're working towards right now is kind of that's like the the here guys, this is kind of it's like the whole scene came together and went. This is kind of what we're doing at the moment and and presented it in the form of Papa Khan, like in a way like which is kind of cool. I feel like because you know like I say, Marauder, aka you know used to be known as Mastodon back in the day writes the heaviest music in you, we could possibly have dreamt of in dubstep that got accepted beyond like death step you know because I, I always felt like death step was too much marauder has mm -hmm. an intensity to it but it's an intensity that you can dance to like death step for me felt like it was trying to be too much for the sake of being too much i feel like marauder stuff was 
bouncy and stompy and angry but there was a, a level of being able to dance to it and that's essentially what for me made him stick out so much beyond the other angry styles of music and that's and that's come from um the way the gen the way the way the genre moves for me is exactly the same as the way that uh drum and bass was was that it went through a phase where everything was basic then it went through a phase where everything was musical and a bit more happy and chill and then it went to a phase where everything was loud and aggressive like original sin i don't know if you i assume you're a drum and bass fan and, of course yeah. i know original so yeah yeah sin. so original sin and tax man and all them guys they were much more of an upbeat loud cymbals heavy driven style of drum yep. and bass and then when dubstep came along and effectively cut it down from its pedestal it went minimal like jump like the minimal jump up stuff came, came in and it's exactly the same as what dubstep is doing it's ex literally exactly the same we went to a place yeah. where we went from basic dubstep to really cool bouncy stuff like like roscoe came in with which was still a lot of the a lot of the more basic styles of dubstep actually was still doing its thing but the, the bouncy style came in and then things got more aggressive and more energetic because like for instance myself and circus records we brought it in with dr p uh, myself, Cookie Monster, we brought in a much bigger energy that really the scene didn't have a lot of. There was 16-bit, bar 9, you know, there are names for sure. I'm not going to say we pioneered that stuff completely, but we were one of the, you know, some of the first people to bring it in and to really set the mark with it. And this is, and then it turned into um, really aggressive, I feel like at one point. It got a bit like, it got to genetics and me and things like that, and everything got a bit heavy. And then when Dubstep effectively died, as they say, I need to use the pistol more than this bloody gun, I swear to god. Uh, RE45 is the move. Honestly. These kids know how to crush you though. Get my cheeks clapped! I just shot you, Blankson. Oh, I did so much damage then, that's annoying. But like, that that evolution from like, really intense dubstep, and then when it, when dubstep effectively died, like in the same sort of point that, that, that DNB was kicked off its pedestal, like dubstep was. It then went basic, like that really simple rhythm was the new vibe. And that's exactly what DMB did. Rhythm was the jump up, you know, for, for, for dubstep. So like, and then when rhythm happened, people were getting bored of rhythm because it was too much. And then suddenly uh, Mastodon slash Marauder happened and everyone's losing their mind because they've had so much of this simple bounce that they wanted something more. And then, and then it became too much. And that's exactly what happened to DMB. But instead of DMB, instead of it being too much, DMB went to a very dance floor musical place where Hospital Records really, really overtook everyone. Like Hospital Records and Ram Records just overtook everyone. Like anything they were making. And a lot of um, what Shogun was doing as well. In fact, people like Alex Perez, that more rolling style of drum and bass that mm -hmm. may not have been accepted quite as much back in the day you know it was more of a, a niche at the time it's now more it's like drum and bass is so more so much more open someone can listen to a banger jump up track but then listen to a roller by alex perez and then listen to some liquid by hospital records and that's something that's never really been a thing in dub in drum and bass because i came from drum and bass and people had their own little groups of uh, genres that they liked eff effectively so i feel like that same thing is now happening to dubstep things are opening up and there's music happening and there's angry happening and it's like everything's merging into one into one beam you know i, I love it honestly because i think it's really it's really healthy for the scene dude me and this lifeline are absolute nemesis i swear to god we've been at it like <laughs> the last two rounds solely she is dead now hell yeah and um i i like it i think that the moment we've got to is where we don't know if we want to be heavy we don't know if we, we don't know if we want to be musical all i know is that people are trying to work themselves out and it's bringing out some really cool weird ideas you know like things like that yeah it's uh it's definitely getting to a point too like at least from personal experiences it's nice because I don't have expectations to like set with the status quo necessarily. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so like I can turn around and I can do something heavy, like Pain Packer. Um, and then I can turn around and like one of my other tunes, like Wada Ting or something. Yeah, like that, yeah, which yeah, are yeah. Two completely opposite ends. Of the which spectrum. is a favorite of mine, BTW. If anyone wants to hear uh, any music that for me typifies the new Neonics, Wada Ting. W a t i t i n g. What? No. What? Wata. W a t a t i n g. Wata ting. There you go. Wata ting. Wata ting is for me is kind of right now typifies 
peak Neonix at the moment. Like that's just that's the sound I would say. What does he sound like? Well, go and listen to that track. That's him, for me personally. So it's it's just such an e like I can't even say it's an easier market now. It's just such a more diverse market, mm. and it's got such. I'd say like in terms of when people say like, oh, is dubstep dead? No. It may be spread, you know, a little bit thin here and there, but as far as dead, absolutely not. No chance. Yeah. No, no. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think we can ever say again that dubstep is dead. I don't think we're ever going to get to the point now where dubstep is dead. It's... <laughs> what is happening over there? I'm getting lit up by their whole team. That's what's happening. Damn. Okay. I'm trying to That's flank them. Okay. Well, I got one down. They're like. Oh yeah. Ouch. But yeah, it's just, it's spread so far now, and there's so many different, like, niche groups of people. Like, you've got, like, Halcyon and Rushdown, um, Woo! and a million more of those are just that like, pop off the top of my head, um, that do kind of, like, the melodic -y, more, you know, kind of paced out stuff. It's got more emphasis on, on mood with chord structure and stuff like that. Can I hear this person, please? <laughs> what is happening, dude? Through a whole clip. Oh, you better. Oh, they're revving right now. Yeah, they're lifeline. Just rev. Ooh, it's not good. That's annoying as hell, dude. I could not hit that person. Oh, their whole squad. Okay. Thank Whew, you. That was really annoying. That was really annoying. Yeah, I was gonna. I was saying like I don't think we can ever really again say that Dubstep Dead died. I think the reason Dubstep died is because it was overkill. It was obviously overkill. It was in prop tracks like. It was on the radio and stuff, you know, like, it, it got too much, yeah. everyone was sick of it, it was forcing everyone's faces by the majors. It was overkill, for sure, that's exactly what happened. That being said, like, that death of, of and I'm using that with quotation marks on my fingers, <laughs> is the death of dubstep, for me at the time, was a signification of, we're sick of it, get out of our face, kind of thing. So there was room, and there was so much to, to be done in the scene, like, dude, you listen to music now, it's so completely different to what back then was a Skrillex, you know, heavy influenced scene to you couldn't you literally couldn't even tell if it's the same producers making this music you know compared to back then so um i don't think we're in a position ever again to be saying stuff like dubstep is dead in any way because i think now it's it's, it's for sure an established genre that um is its own beast and i don't think we can say it anymore like i think back then it was it was trying to find legs as a main genre it was trying to be a main genre um so oh there's one there and uh, I don't think we're in we're in that case anymore. I think don't come back and take my juice. Take my juice. <laughs> I left you some shields back there. I saw you drop something. I didn't understand why. Oh, upstairs, upstairs. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. Where's he at? Where's he at? I hear someone. Bam to the bam. I'm I'm running out of ideas. They're both up. Oh, there's one down. Oh, yeah, I see him. Oh, storm. Okay, okay. There's a third one somewhere. Scanning the area. I don't know where they are. No, neither. I think they're up top. Either that or they're gonna try to push res. They're probably up top. Go bamboozle. We're gonna find out though. I think they're above this way? on this. I think they're directly above us on this roof here. Honestly. Oh! I tapped out by accident, press one button. I have a feeling he's on this roof, but I don't, I don't know why it's not scanning him. I'm up here on this roof, and I... Oh, God. We gotta get to the ring. Unless that was their master play all along. Is this here oh, on? They got all three. They got all three up. Oh, no. Oh, just stay alive. No! I was, uh, dude, I was right on the ring, dude. I was right on the... That's what she said. I was right on the ring, dude. I was ready to get out of there. I was hitting him with the pistol. He was running like... I could have won that, but... Frick, dude. Oh man, that, that sucks. Frick. Yeah, I don't know. That's an that's an F in the chat. Do you have a Do you have a favorite track you've written? Uh, if you if, if if someone was to say, what track? If you would, if someone was to say to you, 
Hey, I've never heard of Dubstep, and I've definitely never heard of Neonix. Send me to your track. What is the track you sent me to? To my track. So if I had to pick one. Hmm. That's a good question. We're not, we're not talking like someone's auntie. We're talking someone who wants to get into Dubstep. So we're talking someone who wants to be an authentic Dubstep listener, you know? It's not like... Your auntie goes, hey, can I hear your music? And then you send them to the most musical thing you can because you want them to like you and be proud of you. <laughs> you know, I'm talking like, you want someone to go, oh, cool, this is Neonix kind of thing. What, what, what's the track? What's the go-to? Um, it would, it would probably either be Pupo or Water Tang. Um, yeah. Just because those are both kind of silly songs, and that's generally what I try to present. Mm. As far as my music, the way that Right on my body. Right on my body. Yep. Two on my body now, actually. Two. Oh, yeah, I would say Water Ting is a good, is a good go-to. There's a, there's a simplicity to it and there's a bounce to it, but there's that vocal gives it a uh, a musical edge in a way. You know, that's kind of what really sets that track apart. I think. I think what I'm saying for me is that it's the vocal is what really makes that track. Like, it, that track as a whole is really cool. If you were to send me that without the vocal, I think the track would be a cool bouncer. But that vocal works so perfectly because it's actually quite musical. Um, that edge it gives it, I think, really takes it over the edge of being a, 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 you know, it typifies that track completely and makes it better, if anything. Yeah. So. It's just a, it's a good old bouncy tune. And uh, I think, like, as far as what I want to present to people. Generally, that's why it's a tough question for me is because I feel like I have so many different sides to my music. Yeah, I don't think you're I, a nailed down style yet. I feel like you're just, you're still discovering your, your legs with Neonix, but you've definitely got an edge about you, I think, at the moment, which you're flexing, so. Yeah, and that's kind of like my my whole, my general ideology with with when I try to produce now is I, I don't really want to have any one style that somebody can really expect of me. Yeah. Because I think that's just kind of like one of my life points. Here's a life point. You can put it on a mug if you want, because I'm not going to. Yeah. Um, literally, like, expectations lead to disappointment. Yeah. So it's better to just not... You can be hopeful, but if you expect something to be consistent or the same... Um, obviously it varies with the circumstance, but yeah. with artistic expression, it almost always leads to disappointment. Yeah, I think that's and a fair that's point, but I also, I also think that nailing down a style is probably one of the hardest things to do in this day and age where someone can pick your style out from anyone's, you know, like... Oh, 100%. That's, that's the, the, you know, the one side of it, and the other side is that you don't want to be the guy that you, everyone goes, oh, that's that guy, when they hear the song. You know, it's kind of a weird double-edged coin where you want to be different and you want to do cool stuff and you want someone to notice you instantaneously, but you don't want to be the guy that does that thing over and over and everyone knows, you know, and it's like, what, what? how do you stand out? You know, unless you're super different and weird. That's the kind of the exactly. weird double-edged sword with that, so it's, it's a strange one. Wow, this, this circle is, wow. Oh no, he should have stayed on the roof. He should have stayed on the roof. Oh, he won. Oh, Dang, he dude, it. I can't believe that clutch was held, dude. I cannot believe- Oh, dude, he should have stayed on the roof and just shot him. That would have been easy. Wow. I can't believe it. Match point, dude. Well, this is good timing. We've only got five minutes left, so uh, let's let's nail this down. Let's nail this puppy. Hmm, what am I going to try here? Oh, I'm going to go all- I'm going to go carbine. Carbine? I didn't realize you could upgrade guns. What is my life? Wow, I've been, Come on, I've been playing. What's the money's for? Yeah, I didn't know. I've only, I've just been, I only, I've only really been doing that uh, buy system during these these shows, so I've not noticed it. Wow, I've been, I've been playing like one leg the whole time. Yeah. I've been doing that da so damage with one leg. Holy moly! That's what the little, the little rack stations with the little blue hexagons on them. Yeah. Uh, those have money, so if you tag yeah, yeah, those yeah. In, uh, every round, you have more money to spend. Yeah, yeah. I've been, no, I've been, I've been collecting money just by not spending too much on guns each round, but like. Oh like, no! It doesn't roll over. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. Nope. I've been, get, but I've been getting loads more and more money each time. Oh, they're on the roofs again. It, it increases each round, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. They're all on the roof right now. We're gonna have to get up there. He's on his own, I think. All right. They keep trying to get me from preventing me from getting the shield. 
Alter. Ja, das töten, ne? Oh yeah, roof time. I think I'm gonna just stay here. I have a feeling they're gonna try and drop off the roof here. Wow. He's gotta finish him, dude. Please tell me he's gonna finish him. It's just this one up here. I was waiting to see if they would jump off the roof, but it looks like I have to come up and help. How about hide behind the stairs, you dingus? Oh, the smoke covers the pain? Oh, there we go. Nice, dude. Nice. All right, this we bagged like three today, I think. We're, uh, dude, we're OP. We're OP. I didn't get one win with, with Sweet Tooth. <laughs> I can't lie. I don't think anyway, not that I remember. But, yeah, we're OP, dude. We're OP. We're OP. Um, yeah, well, that concludes our Apex sesh. We've got a few minutes to wrap this up. So, uh, yeah, let's get out of this. Let's get out. Let's get her. Let's get her. Let's get her. <laughs> you're, so, you're so Texas. You're so Texas. All right. Well, let's wrap this up. Um, is there anything you uh, anything you want to say to the people? Any any releases you want to promote? Anything you got coming up? Anything you'd like to uh, uh, let people know of? I don't really have any releases planned at the moment, just because we did uh, we just did an EP uh, at the beginning of the month with which Psych is very Oscar good, recording. by the way. Go listen to Stephen. It's yes, <laughs> it's uh, it's an EP that I put together for uh, Cyclops Recordings. It's Subtronics uh, mainstay label that he started up. Um, it's a four track EP on there. It's just called the Lee Tapes. If you all want to go check that out, it would be greatly appreciated. It yes, should yes. be on like literally every platform. Yep. Other than that, as far as like future stuff goes, I would say just keep your eyes peeled. Uh, there's stuff in the works, but not a lot of stuff I can talk about yet. Um, but there is another EP coming. Wink, wink. Wink, I wink. I don't know when yet. You are a machine. You write, you write music uh, out of your anus, honestly. You write so much of it quite easily. I, I have to uh, I have to give props to my manager for basically putting the little can of feed in front of my face like a mule. Yeah. And making me making me work for it because <laughs> otherwise I would just sit here and play Apex all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Um, where can people reach you? Where? What's your socials? Uh, you can pretty much hit me on everything with uh, at Neonix Dub N E O N I X D U B. That's pretty much everything: Twitter, Instagram. SoundCloud, Facebook. Do you I stream? Do you stream at all? I do stream a little bit. I'm trying to get back up more into it. Um, I just didn't expect to be playing shows back mm. so early. Yeah. My game plan was for next month, um, tomorrow, to start streaming more. Um, and that should be the same handle as well, twitch.tv forward slash Neonic Stub. If you all want to go check it out, sometimes I do production stuff. Sometimes I just hang out and do Q&A stuff. Sometimes I game a little bit. Um, but it's really kind of just off the cuff, like whatever I'm feeling that day. And we'll usually just try to get up there at least like once a week. Yeah. Um, for the next months, just coming up to yeah. try to kick that up. Yeah, sweet. All right. Well, guys, you heard the man. Make sure you hit that follow on uh, every every social media that you, you, you're involved in that he mentioned. Make sure you go and hit him up in the Onyx dub. Uh, Lee, thanks so much for getting involved. Mr. Lee Jennings, everybody. Clap, 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 clap. I don't have a soundbite for claps. I should do, though, but yeah. <laughs> See, that face is me. That face is very me. I don't want to hear anyone saying about, yo, you you copy Getter. Dude, he copied me. Don't even start this. Don't even start That is this. true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, Getter right, does Lee? the funny faces, but this man did it first. That's true. Yeah, hello. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, some recognition for it. All right, Lee, thanks so much for getting involved. It's been great. I'm going to switch over now, and then, uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Guys, that has been Neonix. I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Uh, we got some wins. Some absolutely beautiful wins today. Um, thanks so much to the platform NACL for him featuring us. Um, we're going to be back next week with another guest. Keep your eye out for that. If you join me on my social medias, um, it's Funtcase UK. It's pretty much everything. Apart from my Twitch, which I stream Monday to Fridays, that is actually at Funtcase. If you go and head over to there, um, yeah, you can find out some information. Come hang out in chat. Come and ask me some questions. Um, thanks so much for getting involved. I'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. See you guys soon. And uh, yeah, stay golden. <laughs>